You want to know the funny thing? When it comes to these giant JRPGs, a lot of the time I find myself thinking about singular moments in the overall experience. And I walk away from the game satisfied knowing that I got to experience that individual moment. Could be a boss fight. Could be some funny glitch. It could be a line of dialogue or a character or a certain payoff or just a scene. And it's those moments that are used as the foundation upon which our memories and opinions of the game are formed and built upon. Xenoblade Chronicles as a series has a lot of those moments for me. Those individual experiences that have shaped and created the opinions of the series that I have today. From navigating the world of Mira with a freaking mech for the first time, or geezing out at Gormod all those years ago with Xenoblade 2, or watching Fiora die for the very first time, or realizing I could unlock Full Metal Jaguar, a class I really wanted in Xenoblade 3, after gaining an ability that let me climb some vines for a bit, that I had mentally marked down when I first saw them. It's moments like that which tell a story, which serve as a vortex of internal subconscious thought, which paint the rest of the overall experience. Your thoughts and memories of an event or a series of events today may not be the same as when you first experienced them. They have been recontextualized, and for better or for worse, you have inserted new information to that core memory, which has altered your experience with it. And for me, I tend to find the moments I cherish the most in the game to be those moments, which aid in recontextualizing my previous experience with the game. They have this way of just placing all the pieces of the puzzle down in the correct orientation and placement all at once, where I can take a step back and realize that I had been staring at a work of art and only saw each brushstroke before. Those moments, those treasured few moments are a rare commodity for me, and they are largely reserved for my favorite of favorite games. As a general rule of thumb, if a game is in my top 10 games of all time, then at some point in that game, there was one of those key moments in it. And one of the reasons that Xenoblade Chronicles stands as my favorite series of all time in retrospect is because each entry has one or multiple of those truly special moments in it. But there's one, one singular event that happened in one singular Xenoblade game that shined so brightly that made everything I had done in the game worth it, despite the flaws and critiques I had for the game up to that point. A moment so dang near perfectly written, paced, thought out, animated, and performed that it recontextualized everything about the story to make it more engaging, emotional, endearing, and provocative for me. Where I would think about that one moment for eternity. And before we get to that one singular point in the game, let's talk about my top four moments in Xenoblade games. I mentioned this before, but getting the skill in Xenoblade X is a truly special moment where Everything you know about navigating the world and just fundamentally interacting with it, whether it be boss fights, customization, climbing mountains, scaling walls, it's the only moment like that that I will talk about in this video that is strictly gameplay. And that's because it made the game feel like a whole new experience for me. I looked at the entire world through fresh eyes, wanting to explore every little crevice all over again. And the next one I've talked about extensively on this channel after all, Chapter 5 of Xenoblade Chronicles 3, but as a quick summation, that chapter plays with your expectations and emotions in such a unique way, where it gives you hope and takes it away, makes you think one thing is going to happen when it goes the other. It leads you on and toys with what you expect out of a story and what you expect the game to do and uses that to tell a more cohesive and engaging story. Now, this next one is dang close to my favorite moment that I've talked about before. It's very close, and depending upon the day, I might say it's my favorite moment after all. The ending of Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Because there are few moments in any piece of media that I've ever consumed that wrapped up a story as beautifully as Xenoblade 2. And I would be doing it an injustice just trying to cover it in this one video. Which is why I've made two separate videos already about why this ending is so perfect. I'll link them in the description down below. But it wraps up the story, the characters, and the theme and messaging perfectly. It truly does. You could give me a year, hell a decade, hell the rest of my life, and I couldn't write a better ending than Xenoblade 2 did. I couldn't do it. But my favorite moment overall, that's a different story. And I like it for different reasons. Similar reasons, but different ones nonetheless. Can you guess what it is? Well, I'll give you a hint. It also comes from Xenoblade 2. But that's not entirely accurate, now is it? Because it comes from Xenoblade Chronicles 2's prequel. 
Torna, the Golden Country. Let's talk about the ending. And I'm not talking about the entire ending. It's great, don't get me wrong, but my favorite moment in all of Xenoblade Chronicles is the chunk that happens at the very end when a moment of eternity starts playing. That is a chunk of se chunk of game that has see been seared into my mind. I ordinarily don't like prequels. I find that I lose interest because the stakes are low because I know how everything must end up. It's a personal gripe for me, but it's funny how arguably my favorite bit of Xenoblade comes from the prequel. And how is someone that normally likes a happy ending, or at least a satisfying ending? Well, this is definitely not a happy ending, but one with a hopeful twist on it. A Moment of Eternity by itself is on par with One Last You for me. The song is a perfect encapsulation of the emotions and thoughts Laura felt towards Jin and the predicament they found themselves in. From us seeing a Malthus go Game of Thrones and usurp the leadership of Indol, leading perfectly into that game's story, to Adam burying Pyra beneath the clouds, wrapping up her backstory, and lead us, leading us quite nicely into Xenoblade 2, to the moments that transpire right before Laura dies and Jin's descent begins. But my favorite aspect of it is that they don't actually show it. God, it's so much more powerful for not showing us Laura dying again because it forces you, the player, to remember it yourself from the base game. And it does a drone shot over the Indoline forces and just fades to black for the rest of the credits. It is so much more powerful because it forces you to remember the imagery, to remember the exact events, drudge them up almost like a Rex on a salvaging operation. Remember those moments. Remember when Laura dies and when Jin becomes a flesh eater. And then, from the credits upon a black screen, Jin's final monologue begins. And if I had to pick my favorite line of dialogue from any game ever, this speech by Jin would probably take the number one slot. It tells us of Jin's motivation. We see him burning down his old, happy lives leaving him with just Laura's body off camera as a reminder of what drives him from here on out. And he puts up a mask that he used to wear sometimes, but him putting it on has been recontextualized, almost as if he's trying to prepare for the road ahead, the one that he has chosen to walk down on, as if he's trying to cover up who he was before. His worldview is laid bare for all of us to witness, succinctly and eloquently. He doesn't wish for eternity, just a moment to see her smile again. He views the future as a road that he must walk down, a singular path laid before him to find what he ultimately desires more than anything. One last moment with Laura. And what this moment does is make Xenoblade 2 a better game. A game I already loved by its own, but what Torna the Golden Country, and more specifically this moment managed to serve, to do even, is to serve as the perfect way to cap off Xenoblade 2 as a whole. I always play the games in order of Xenoblade 2 and then Torna. I never do the reverse because this, to me, is the intended way. This is the way where the emotions of each scene resonate the strongest for me. It gave Jin the backstory that I wanted from him to where he was elevated to one of my favorite characters. He is nuanced yet intriguing with a simple yet understandable motivation guiding his every action. The pain of loss and separation can be a great one. And for Jin, he was never able to move on from the very end of Torna until the very end of 2 because of Rex. And what this ending does so well is show the things it needs to and lets your memory of the events of 2 and what must happen to fill in the blanks. It forces your brain to remember, and because it does that, it makes your memory part of the story. To me, it just amplifies the emotional resonance of each scene. That is why it is such a perfect prequel. It uses the endpoints and development that you have from the base game to make this backstory more rich and fulfilling, and that is why I will always say to play 2 before you play Torna, because those scenes in 2, with Laura, with Laura dying, Knowing where Jin ends up, and knowing where Mithra and Pyra end up, is important for the scenes in Torna, and especially for this moment to land perfectly. But now going in the opposite direction, this moment makes all of Jin's story in 2 far more engaging and recontextualizes all of those scenes. Him killing Hayes. Now you know the reason. You know that even though... Jin kills her that through his eyes it's an act of mercy because they showed you the backstory. They showed you the reasoning. They did not just tell you. It was fun enough to tell you his thoughts in 2 because it worked for the pacing of that game. But with Torna they show you it and when they show you something it's far more impactful 
and resonates so much better, in my opinion. Because the imagery sticks with you. The imagery of all of Jin's backstory and his development. You now know Mithra's reason for secluding herself in a mental elysium alongside Pyra. You have shown these things in Torna, and it culminates with this moment where it all kicks off with all these individual stories branching off to come back together again with Xenoblade 2. The story of Jin and Laura is a tragic one, but a meaningful one. There aren't always a happy ending at the end of the road, and sometimes the road is along and treacherous and painful, and sometimes you as a person change as a consequence of your own choices and of the choices of others. A moment of eternity is the perfect pairing. As we watch Jin walk his own path, we hear Laura through the song almost pleading for Jin to move on, and that they will meet again, that the time they shared was precious, but to quote the song, don't look back, let the moment be eternal. I paraphrased at the end, it's more like let the moment be forever. But Jin is unable to let go. He can't stop but looking back. And instead of letting those memories, all those moments ring eternal in his mind to guide his every step forward in a productive manner, he is desperate to bring them back. And we don't want that. We wanted to heed Laura's advice to walk a different path, but we all make our own choices. And we watch Jin walk his own. What a vengeance against Amalthus and one that he believes is the only path for him. The days roll on and we see Rex discover Paiva, and it's a perfect way to remind the player that yeah, the events of Torna were tragic, but Xenoblade 2 still happens. Jin is able to make a better choice later on and move on. He is able to get his closure. So you, la you leave off on a sad note, but a hopeful one, because you know what events are to come. And that feeling, that feeling I felt when I first played Torna and got to that, and got past the credits, saw this scene, and game was over. I knew from that moment on that was going to be one of my favorite moments of all time because that is one of my favorite endings of all time. And that moment made all of Xenoblade 2 and the rest of Torna so much better, so much more compelling and impactful for me. And that is why Xenoblade 2 Torna. And the ending specifically is my favorite moment in all of Xenoblade because when I talk about recontextualization. When I talk about showing, not telling. When I talk about pacing, dialogue, animations, subtlety. This is the scene that encapsulates all of that. And I will leave it off there for the day. Thank you all for tuning in. Hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. It really helps the channel out and helps support future content. And I greatly appreciate it. Stay safe with everybody. Have a great day. I'm J-Moles of J-Moles Gaming. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye, everybody.